a lot uh, for the invitation and to all of you for being here. Uh, so. Uh, so it's good, I can, I can, yeah. So yes, indeed, I'm gonna be telling you about some exciting things that I've been doing recently with Hector Parra. Uh, I'll be telling you more about exactly what Hector did because he's truly amazing. He's a, just a PhD student in Saint Clair, but he did an excellent work. Uh, and indeed, we, we uh, by thinking along these lines, thinking about discrete angles, we were able to find new examples of string theories with 16 supercharges. We thought we had all of those. These are new uh, in the literature. Uh, just when you need it. Aha. Is yes, that's working. Okay. But to understand the bigger picture, why were we thinking about these things? And why did we find them just now after so many years? I think it's better to take a step back and understand rather than where, where, what kind of theories are on the string landscape in the landscape of consistent quantum theories of gravity that you can get from string theory, you need to understand which theories are not in the string landscape. So this is actually where we are mostly thinking about which kind of features uh, on the string landscape. In other words, we need to understand what is the swampland. So I'm not sure if everybody here is swampland with uh, is, is familiar with the swampland idea. Uh, so just in case, I will start with an introduction to the idea. Uh, then I will particularize the big picture to talk about theories with 16 supercharges. Um, and we will need to talk about theories not just at the level of the you know two derivative action, but also higher derivative terms, math terms. And thinking about swampland ideas and, and uh, beyond the two derivative level would lead us to the discovery uh, of new string theories. You know, I will spend most of the time. So this is the general idea I'm gonna cover. And before I actually get on with it, there's something very, very important I need to say before anything else, which is that you should please interrupt me at any point. Okay, with questions, comments, whatever, the whole point of, you know, we're back in person, fortunately, so, you know, let's, let's make the most of it, okay? That's really Okay, so what is the basic idea behind the swamp plan? For those of you who don't know. Well, suppose that you wanna construct, uh, you have your favorite quantum field theory, you wanna say, oh yeah, I, I just wanna couple this to gravity and have my quantum field theory that I like being the low energy effective field theory of some quantum gravity. Well, at the two derivative level, just the level of the Lagrangian, it's very easy to do this. Your theory, if your theory has a Lagrangian, just take the Lagrangian, couple to the metric like this, put gravity like that, and to the derivative level, you can compute loops, you can do all sorts of nice things. It's you know it's perfectly fine. Uh, and you can do this for any effective theory Lagrangian you can think about. Um, I've been cavalier, what I mean here by effective theory, you know, am I including higher relative terms here? Am I not including higher relative terms? Depending of, of which context you're discussing in particular, you might want to include it or not, but for the general idea that I want to convey here. Excuse me, here yes. you're going to uh, put in terms that are always uh, spin two and less, right? Yes. yes but massive that's... or masses, but spin two and less absolutely, always. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I meant by effective theory, quantum field theory. I'm putting a quantum field theory. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. So, you know, it seems like you can always do this, right? Why, why would, I mean, there's maybe obstructions coming from things that you can see at one loop, like gravitational anomalies. But once you get rid of those, it's like you can do it. Well, the basic idea of the Swamplant program, which is this, this set of ideas that some of us have been pursuing, is that this is actually not true. It might not be obvious from the energy effective point of view, but it might not be something you can actually find out just from a simple calculation in effective field theory. But we believe that not every effective field theory like this can be consistently coupled to gravity. There are constraints which are invisible to an IR observer, but that you must satisfy. Okay. So if you sorry about this, yes, I have to get this straight. Because uh, ELEFT, yes. if it contains massive modes as well, yes. you have to be specific about the spin. I was a moment ago, I said spin two and less, and you didn't object. Yes. Are you sure you want to have massive spin two? Oh, sorry, no, 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 no. That's right. I don't want to have massive spin. That. So you um, want uh, spin one and less. That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sorry, you're right. Spin okay. less than two. Everything you can write down on a gram. Like if you want to have on a gram for massive spin two and stuff like that, what you typically get that is, you know, from Carlos Klein reduction of higher dimensional theory. Exactly. Right? So and that's a theory why don't you consider them if they are Carlos Klein-ish? Uh, 
a message for strongly them. That, that, is, that, is, that is true, but you know, like I would not describe them with the low effective with your Lagrangian. So, you know, it could very well be oh, that okay. you give me your effective with your Lagrangian when I couple to gravity, it only has spin one, spin zero. You're gonna couple it like this. And sure, maybe consistency demands that you also have some massive spin two guys that neither you or I are talking about. But you're not gonna consider them. I'm not considering them at this point. But I just wanna, this is really, I just wanna give you like the broad picture. Okay. That if you draw this blob, the set of all quantum effective theory, quantum field theories, regardless of the effective field theories, the idea of the swamp plant is that there's just a subset of them that can appear in quantum gravity. And the main idea of working in the swamp plant is to try and find out universal properties that the effective field theories that are in the landscape that can be consistently coupled to gravity uh, that I must satisfy. Okay. And from the swamp point of view, string theory becomes more like a more, more of a laboratory. Once you come up with some general arguments, some, some notion why the effective field theories that can be coupled with gravity must satisfy certain property, you can go and check. Is this true? You don't know what the quantum theory of gravity that describes the real world is, presumably. But we do have a large class of consistent models in terms of string theory compactification. So we can check against that. Okay. So, of course, we not only want to check whatever we get, we also want to use it to make predictions, ideally, eventually, about the real world, but in practice, you know, about whatever that we can get our, uh, our hands on. So ultimately, we'd like to constrain the real world, but that's very difficult. And I wish I could give you a talk about putting constraints in the real world, like as solid as the ones I'm going to be telling you about in this talk. But unfortunately, uh, if I want to go for pretty solid stuff, I, I'm going to take my life easier by simplifying the problem and looking at just a supersymmetric theories. Okay? Because it's no surprise any kind of argument when you combine with supersymmetry becomes stronger. Okay? So I'm going to be discussing in this talk the swamp plan of, uh, of supersymmetric field theories. And not only supersymmetric, Okay, because supersymmetry, you can do things like, for instance, for dn equals one, which just, just has four supercharges. That's the minimal amount of supersymmetry you can have in four dimensions. And with four dn equals one, you know, there's, there's many, many things you can write down. You, there's many, you know, there's the, the effective reduce is specified by a Gehler potential and a super potential. And those two arbitrary functions, there's a lot of freedom. I'm gonna make my life even easier. I'm gonna be looking at the problem of Swamp plan understanding which effective field theories can be equal to gravity in theories with more, way more, with more than four dimensions. I'm going to be looking at theories with seven, eight, and nine dimensions. Why am I looking at those? Because they're the minimal supersymmetry you can put is 16 supercharges. And with 16 supercharges, you really buy a lot of them. Okay? So, you know, it's a simple problem. It's very simple. So, interest should go down because it's simply is far further away from the real world. But we're going to be able to say very, very strong things, which I think is uh, quite interesting. And it's by thinking about this that we discovered these new string theories. By new string theories, really mean new compact. Yes, new compactifications. That's what I mean. Okay. But you know, uh, it sounds too dramatic. New string theory. Uh, right. Right. Because we think of ten dimensions well, and we say, oh, oh, are there something new? Well, uh, actually, that's a very interesting point you're making. There might be. So the, for instance, not in 10 dimensions, but in 11 dimensions, this is a bit off topic for the, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna be telling you how to get new string compactifications, new components of modelized space using discrete data angles, okay? And what that means essentially is that if you give me any super gravity and there's a discrete data angle that you can write on an effective field theory, then you have a real question, is this data angle giving you new quantum gravity or not, okay? So in 11 dimensional super gravity until Three years ago, we didn't know any data terms. But three years ago, there was a paper by Dan Fried and Michael Hopkins, where they classified all topological couplings that you can have in M theory, and they found that this created down. This is an open question we're actually thinking about because there might be a second version of M theory in dimensions, or it might be that this, the value of this data angle is frozen to either zero or pi by some consistency condition. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? But, but yes, you know, the, the distinction between if you're given a nine-dimensional, you know, quantum theory of gravity, you know, these, these for instance, are what I'm going to be telling you about the new nine-dimensional quantum theory of gravity. Okay. Any other questions? 
Eight and seven are not within your realm today in this talk. Yeah, seven is gonna be, yeah, they're they're gonna be in, not in this talk. But. No, no, they're gonna be in this talk as well. I see. Uh, I, I really put the focus on the nine-dimensional example because that's easier uh, to understand. Mm -hmm. But we actually discovered three new theories, three new components of modelized space. Two of them live only in seven dimensions. I'm gonna be talking about those as well because this with the techniques that we have, there's probably many more to discover. Okay. Yes. That will come, but can you obtain those new theories from the usual? Uh... That will come. So I'm just gonna not say anything about that because, uh, okay. yeah, definitely. Okay, any more questions? All right. So then, you know, I've been, I'm telling you about the swamp plan with, uh, we can, uh, about what can you get? Which effective field theories can be coupled to quantum gravity with a lot of supersymmetry. And because I said a lot of supersymmetry a bunch of times, I'm entitled to talk about the case with high supersymmetry, 30 supercharges. And this is just to give you an, uh, an idea. And in this case, if you're just really talking again about the two derivative action, things are super easy because things are essentially fixed by supersymmetry. With 32 supercharges, there's just one multiple you can see there's a gravity multiple. Uh, so for instance, if you're trying to classify all two derivative actions in learned dimensions with supersymmetry, there's just one supergravity you can write down, and we believe that's the low energy limit of a consistent quantum gravity that's in here. In 10 dimensions, there's two social algebras, type 2a supergravity, and type 2b supergravity. And they again come from red chemistry. And in nine dimensions, everything you get is a trivial computation of this. So, you know, with 32 supercharges, every low energy effective field theory that you can write down, okay, turns out to be the low energy limit of a consistent quantum theory of gravity. Of, of a string theory. So you could say that with 32 supercharges in just one slide and a few lines, you're going to achieve something that we like to call string universality. Every effective theory you can write down with the supercharges that we know is consistent. You, you can write more, for instance, you could write something like that to be with, uh, with uh, you know, to add more models and stuff. Uh, well, you could do it with 32 supercharges, but in a moment you're going to see it's possible with 16. Uh, whenever everything that is consistent, with swamp plan principles can be realized in string theory, we say that this is the idea of string universality. With 32 supercharges, every supergravity you can write down is coming from string theory. So really, uh, there are some examples in which this is a bit hard to see. For example, if you go to n equals eight 4D and you consider certain gaugings, there is no higher dimension. Very, 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 very good. Very, very good. When you consider gaugings, you get a potential, you get ADS vacuum. I should have put me in Koski all over the place here, I think. That, that's a very good point. That, that, in fact, your, your comment again will apply when I talk about, I'm going to be talking about eight, nine, and seven. In eight and nine, I'm fine because there's no associated as vacuum. But when I say seven, I should classify, I should clarify that I'm referring to seven deeming Koski vacuum, which I am. Okay. So this is very stupid. I mean, just, just, just setting the, the idea for you. So let's go for a bit more. Uh, sorry, uh, Gabriel, the uh, omega deformed theory you have in mind, probably. Uh, did not admit Minkowski as a vacuum by any chance? Uh, I'm not sure if it doesn't allow any Minkowski vacuum. It may not. May not. It better not, because if it does, it would be counterexample to what, he, what you say. Because he just told us if Minkowski admitting vacuum, all 32 Suzy theories must be coming from. No, that, that's what I thought. But suppose that you find someone, maybe this is the omega, bar, maybe, maybe something mm -hmm. that doesn't. Okay. Then what that means is that we should look at it into more detail because it might be that is I'm going to give you an example now in 16 supercharges of theories which are completely fine at the two derivative level, but we can rule out based on swamp and <laughs> things like anomaly influence of strings and stuff like that. So it might very well be that you can come up with a theory with 32 supercharges that has a Minkowski vacuum that I don't know about, and that maybe doesn't come from. from okay. my theory. As long as you say that, we're good. To oh, go. yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I'm just saying that to, to the best of my knowledge, which in the supercharges, basically, it's what I told you on this slide, everything comes from this theory. So the the for the omega deformation, the, the theory itself preserves any positive, but I think that it doesn't allow any, any positive vacuum. Oh, oh, yeah, for instance, you could have asked about the Romance theory. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Okay. Let me talk about a more interesting case, 16 supercharges. So, <clears throat> 16 supercharges is the perfect arena. This is the arena that we're going to be talking about in this talk because it's the minimum supersymmetry more than six dimensions. So, it's, you know, as little as, as little as you can have. 
And life is simple, but it's not as stupid as the theory with 30 supercharges. With 60 supercharges, there's two multiples. You can put the gravity multiple, okay, which has bosonic contour, is a metric tensor, some vector fields, an antisymmetric two form, and a scalar. And you can also have H multiplets, vector multiplets, which have uh, H fields and scalars in the adjoint. Then they have the corresponding fermions. Now, this theory is simple. And it's so simple that, in fact, once you tell me how many multiplets you have, of course, you just want to have one gravity multiplet. So you, once you tell me how many multiplets you have, the large interactions are completely fixed by supersymmetry. The two theoretic Lagrangian you can find in books. It's just fully determined by supergravity. And about the only thing that you can do, the only interesting thing that you can do in this theory is to give a VEF to these scalars in the gravity multiplet and the gauge multiplet. And they parameterize a modular space whose geometry is shown, whose local geometry is known exactly, is, is, an, is of the narrowing type. So it's some coset like this. It doesn't really matter exactly what this is. What it means is that we know exactly what the geometry is. Yeah. Wait, 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 you have to tell us about O gamma. That's a bit unusual cookie there. So no, 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 yeah, sorry, yes, good. So, okay, so what you can tell from the two derivative Lagrangian is that the local geometry is, is space. Yes, but what's the other factor? Now, the other factor. Is uh, is the dual? It's it's in these theories. Okay, they often when when you from the two from the from the, from the supergravity point of view, this is what you see. Okay, mm -hmm. once you engineer them in string theory, they often have duality symmetries, which identify different points in modal space, like S duality stuff like that. We're gonna see examples later. Okay, and this in all the examples that we know, these guys are the orthogonal group of some lattice gamma. Okay, they can be putting one-to-one -one correspondence with the action of some of the of the orthogonal group of or some Lorentzian lattice gamma. So some discrete group. It's a discrete group. Cross like this. And why is the quotation mark around the cross? Uh, I just mean just it's not just mean, direct product, but no, something I, else. No, what I mean is that the so the, the, the okay. hierarchy on the right, this guy's on the left. Okay. That, that's what I mean. Okay. But sorry, I mean this is this is really not it's not gonna matter that much for, for what I'm gonna be telling you. Okay, so you know about the only thing that you can do in this theory is to give a bit to the scalars in the gravity model. And so if you go to a generic point, you can you give a scalar because these guys are in the adjoint, they're gonna break the gauge group to the cartan. So if you give a generic VEV, just a generic VEV to the scalar, the, the gauge group is gonna be U1 to some number R, which is the number of vector multiplets, what we call the rank of the theory. And here is a type which says d should be 10 minus d is the number of vectors that are in the gravity multiplet. Okay, so that's, that's the gauge group that you get the generic point. And about the only interesting thing, interesting thing that can happen here is that at special points in modelized space, you can have symmetry enhancement. Some massive vector bosons can become massless and they can enhance the non group. So this is more interesting physics that I was describing to you, but it's still pretty simple. If you want to specify completely a supergravity like this, for charges in seven, eight dimensions, you just need to tell me two things. The rank of the gauge group, which is just an integer, and a list of which points in modalized space and what are the non-abelian symmetry enhancements that can happen at these points. And once you have that, you have fully specified supergravity theory. Okay? So if this is all the data you need to specify the supergravity, the swamp plan is just figuring out which combinations of this data actually can we get from string theory. For instance, in 10 dimensions, now it starts to be more interesting. In 10 dimensions, there's an additional consistency condition, which is cancellation of anomalies because the, the fields are chiral. And actually, there's just there's no scalar, so the, the, the gauge fields are, are free and non abelian values, and there's just four possibilities that cancel anomalies. There's these two, which you can find in heroic string theories with type one, and these two. And these two, they are completely fine from the point of view of anomaly cancellation of the lower energy effect supergravity. But they were argued to be inconsistent with both our found arguments coming from any anomaly on strings and just from the from an analysis of the Susie variation of the Green Schwartz term. Okay. So, so we get we get the idea of string universality is realized here. All the string. All the string theories that are consistent from the point of view of some arguments are precisely the ones that have a string theory back. Okay. Uh, yeah, can you clarify if you now 
uh, are using Swampland as being just coming from string theory? No, that's very important for all of you I'm saying, right? If I was using Swampland to come from string theory, it would be kind of circular. No, the arguments, for instance, in this paper have to do with the idea, we believe that every quantum theory of gravity that has, for instance, uh, you should have charged objects for every field that you can have. So for instance, these theories, as I told you, they have a string that couples to the gravity model. But still, you know, the inflow on the string, you can argue that these two are impossible. That's an argument that didn't assume string theory. Still, it's just two out of four. It's not very impressive. It's starting to do a little bit better. Let's go back to eight, nine, and uh, the 10 dimensions. And let me forget about the non-abelian piece of data for the time. I mean, I just want to give you a flavor of what we've done with the, uh, with the swamp over the past two years in, in this area. So let's just look at the rank, OK? Well, first of all, there's a swamp an argument that the rank, the number of vectors of these theories, satisfies the inequality 26 minus d, where d is the number of dimensions. So in nine dimensions, go to 17. In eight dimensions, goes to 18. And seven dimensions, go to 19. Where is this argument coming from? Well, this argument is coming from the fact that you take one of these theories, you put in a circle, and you make the circle very, very small. This is a modular space direction you can study. You don't know what happens exactly to the theory, but you can follow some BPS states. And if you were, if you, if you violate this bound, the states that you get in the, uh, uh, that are becoming massless at the at that point at the at the point where the radius goes to zero would not correspond to uh, it would be higher spin states becoming massless exactly massless our higher spin states becoming massless so it wouldn't correspond to something coming from Einstein's gravity uh, but here I just want to take it as a starting point. and what's wrong with that I mean do you know that there are uh, you know massive states in string rigid trajectory states what if some of them become massless well, well is that rule ruled out that, that that's i think that's 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 I, I i agree with you that's a good point uh the let me put it like this if there was a theory with rank above 16 what the argument in this paper shows is that in the infinite distance in the in the limit where you put in a circle you send the circle to zero size you're going to find a theory of gravity which is going to be higher you, you can see there's a tower of things like it looks like i most becoming light so it's going to be the compactification but it's not going to be einstein it's going to be a higher spin theory of gravity Okay. Higher spin theory of gravity with how many higher spin fields? This I don't know. This depends on the details of this paper. Uh, this I don't remember. Right Unless now. there are infinitely many, then you will be no, infinitely many. To, uh, okay. Infinitely. There's infinitely many. Yeah, okay. yeah, once you have one, you have the whole cloud. That's theory, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. So there's, you know, there's there's a, there's there's an argument here the, uh, coming from a version of the sum of this trajectory. You might or might not buy. Uh, the one I'm going to be this is not a string uh, induced uh, criteria. It's, it's not a string induced criteria. Still, you can restrict the rank, even though you're not using string theory. Well, that's right. I mean, it depends on you believe in the swamp and distance conjecture. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, and the swamp and distance conjecture, you extrapolate from string theory examples. Okay. Okay. The condition that I'm going to tell you about, which is perhaps more precise, this really has this is this has nothing has no assumptions other that there's no global symmetry in quantum gravity, because you see there's still a in this talk, really, I wanted to think about it to just uh, to keep our minds fixed on a fixed landscape. You know, it's, it's finally many possibilities. Turns out not all of this can be realized as string theory. You can so go how out from the 26 appear. This is coming from, is related to the, uh, so let's see. It must be because, okay, so. It's something to do with uh, in, in the end, it's going to have to do with something like that. So the point is that uh, even though you're assuming string theory, you assume there's a there's a there's a there's a string. It might not be a fundamental string. This is why this is not string theory. You are you do not assume number go to option or perturbative string theory or anything like that. But you do assume there's a string. And once you assume there's a string in these theories, because of anomaly inflow, you can learn properties about the string. Left moving central charge, right moving central charge, and of course the answers that you get when they are when there's some supersymmetry. They are related to, what, to, to the answers that you're familiar with from perturbative string. And that's, I guess, why the 26 is the thing. Anyway, so there's many values of the rank that you could get, many, many. But you actually don't get all of them in string theory. So there is, the, this is, the, 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 I color coded this in a way that represents our current status of this landscape. So red. 
means that the theory is inconsistent with Swampart principles. So this is an argument that Cobra and I put together. Basically, in nine and eight dimensions, unless the rank is one modulo eight or two modulo eight, okay, you can construct uh, certain objects which have to be there because of a version of the completeness principle. And these objects have a, have a word volume gravitational anomalies, okay? So you can run into a contradiction. Bottom line, uh, by using swamp plan principles, just this is just this, this is really just assuming absence of global symmetries, okay? And uh, uh, that's basically the absence of global symmetries, and together with studying the anomalic cancellation on certain objects, you get a condition that the rank is one modulo eight or two modulo eight in nine and eight dimensions, which exactly matches with the values of the rank that we can get from string. Excuse me, where's the one the one looks white? <laughs> Sorry? Yellow ones are what looks white. Yes, in yellow, in the yellow ones, okay. Yeah, because up and above, it doesn't look yellow to me. Those are just the white ones. That's that's Sorry. the yellow, isn't it? Yeah, this is yellow. I guess the colors are. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the white is yellow. Okay. Yeah, what about just... the green? Uh, what's green? Green is something which is both okay with swamp conditions. No, no, but on the diagram, I don't see green unless I'm yeah. colorblind or something. Okay. Uh, now, have you seen the slides? I guess you see green? green? It's not green, right? right. Okay. So. If you come closer, I think you can see that this, this is green. Oh dear. Green, green, oh, now white green. became green now. Oh green. dear. So what's the yellow? Put your finger on the yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yellow. Oh, please. Yellow. 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 So in yes. the third line, white is equal to yellow. In the first two, white equals well, green. Because when you run this argument, the, uh, the anomaly inflow conditions are for different objects in different dimensions. Right. And you know, anomalies depend on the dimension. And there's modality going on. In the first line is mod eight. Yes. In the second one is also mod eight. And the second one is also, I support, you guys can see the colors. In the other one is mod in the, four. In the, in the third one, actually, what you can actually do is not even mod four. The, the third one, we don't understand. Oh. The one's still open question. So we don't understand why some values of the rank, for instance, you can get from three, three, five, seven, you're going to get nine. Mm -hmm. We don't understand why. Okay, from some point of view either. So we don't know if it's okay or not, but in nine and dimensions, you can actually get, uh, you, you, you get from this argument coming from, from global symmetry, that their values of the rank that are okay with, um, with one plan principles are precisely the values of the rank that you can get in string theory. So when you say landscape is in the landscape, just to get the terminology right, do you Sorry. mean it's co consistent theory of continuity, exactly. but it does not mean the string landscape. Right. It doesn't mean the string Good. landscape. So but can you tell us what are those theories that are in the landscape but not explained by string theory? No, 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 no. What I'm Which saying are they? I'm gonna put okay, sorry. What I'm saying is that the ones that are in green, okay, they're okay with swamp plan principles that I know, yes. and they also have a string theory construction. Yes, but the yes, yellow ones, yes, yes. the yellow ones, they are they are they are consistent as far as I can tell. I don't see a problem with but them. There's no string theory, there's no string theory construction, yeah. and the red ones. Yeah. There's no string theory construction, and I would have a problem with the string theory construction because I think they're inconsistent. Okay. I think I'm most interested in yellow in this for, at this point because, yes. uh, and those are the first two lines with the whitish looking thing. <laughs> yes, the, the yellow are here. Oh, sorry, there in nine, seven dimensions. Seven dimensions. I'm also very interested in yellow. Okay, very good. What I'm, what I'm gonna be telling you though is that this is, you know, it looks like we understood everything here, but it's not really the end of the story. Okay. And the simplest 7D model of this kind is one rank one. So Maxwell Einstein theory, super gravity. Yes, yes, right, exactly. Or for instance, the, the rank nine one, it's just like you have nine vector multiples coupled to gravity. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to do that in string theory. Well, they have a nice toy model, I would say, when you have a rank one. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and it's apparently consistent, but no string theory explanation yet. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyway. So I told you it's not about just the rank, it's an abelian enhancement. In eight and nine dimensions, we also understand those. We actually were even able to make a prediction about which global forms of the Giggs group you get at different points in modelized space, which was the later part. So you could think, oh, fine, great, awesome. In eight and nine dimensions, we have achieved string universality. And in a sense, we have, we, we understand all the effective theories that can arise from eight and nine dimensions as coming from string theory. But this is really not the end of the story. I, again, I'm drawing this, uh, this plot, which you guys can see very well. But if you look at the theory with, with for instance, rank one in nine dimensions, 
I told you you can embed it in string theory. But what I didn't tell you yet is you can actually embed it in string theory in two ways, which turn out to be different. There is this supergravity for sure has one embedding in string theory, but it can have more than one embedding. You can do M theory on the Klein bottle, that gives you this theory, or you can do F theory on Klein bottle times the circle. To do F theory, you need to have a torus. Klein bottle doesn't have a torus, but it has a circle. So when you multiply with another circle, it becomes a torus. And people already actually know that these are different components. Uh, of, of moduli space. So the moduli space of 90 rank one theories is disconnected, has two different components. They don't talk to each other. And so we really, you know, you can't claim a complete understanding unless you understand what are the possible, the, the, this, this, this feature that you can have the same low energy effective field theory with two different string theory embedding. Okay. And I just want to emphasize that this question of how many different embeddings can you have from, from a given effective theory is also a swamp line question. Because how do you distinguish these two theories? Well, they are the same at the two derivative level, but they are different at the level of massive states. These two theories that I told you about, this M theory on Klein bottle and X theory on Klein bottle times a circle, they have different spectra of non BPS massive states. Okay? So if you really try to understand, Quantum theories of gravity beyond the two derivative level, you are led to this kind of questions from Swamland point of view. Okay. Does that mean I need to know something about higher derivatives? Probably not necessarily so, but it not necessarily. Help. Yeah, it will help definitely. And this is how we're going to get them. So, mm -hmm. because we were thinking about, we were, we were worried about this, like how many more possibilities like this are there? Okay. Or can you classify all the string theories like that? That's why we led to this question. And we actually learned that in 9 gen equals 1, there is a third component of my space. Okay, so in this, you can tell them apart from the spectrum massive states and higher terms. Okay. And I'm going to present some new examples. These are described, distinguished from the others by turning on what I call discrete data angles. These are topological couplings that are not visible at the level of the lowering effective field theory, but for instance, change the value of the partition mapping. But what function is this for that time? However, we, Hector and I, when we discovered them, we didn't discover them just like that. We we're doing swamp plan. What were we doing? In particular, what was Hector doing? This is Hector. Uh, and I just really want to, you know, put him on the spot because he actually, he, 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 did, he actually discovered these theories like himself. He did something amazing. So what Hector was trying to do, he was like, okay, I really want to understand all possible quantum theories of, of, of gravity, let's say in seven, eight, and nine dimensions. And he realized, that all of them you can get in a certain way using frozen singularities in M theory and gluing them together following some simple rules. And then, you know, he just followed those rules. And in nine dimensions, for instance, he got uh, the same theory with the same lattice of BPS states. He got it twice. And you get the same answer twice. Sometimes that happens when you're trying to find something, you know, there's like a, some redundancy and then you're getting the same object into, into different descriptions. But Hector, uh, um, Hector took this, this redundancy series, like maybe there's a way to distinguish these two theories. And this also agreed with some algorithm that we have, which also predicted one of the eight dimensional theories twice. And basically by thinking hard about the theories that Hector discovered from a purely bottom-up swamp point of view, he was just classifying with some rules that he extrapolated all possible theories. We actually were able to find a string embedding of these theories that we found. So Hector is, I just want to emphasize he's super good. I don't know if you guys are going to follow but is a plan. Anyway, let me give you the first example of this new theory with uh, with sixteen supercharges. I've been telling you for half an hour the swamp plan, and you're gonna see that the actual construction I have is quite simple. Let's construct this theory. So let me start with that to be string theory in ten dimensions. It turns out it has two perturbative symmetries, which we call omega and minus one to the FL. They are as dual to each other. And on the Ramon Ramon axiom C0, they act by flipping the Ramon axiom by a sign. And so, one thing that you can do is you can take type 2b on a circle and you can put a Wilson line for this. This is something that Gabriel is familiar with. He's been doing similar things in four dimensions. Uh, you can do it 
uh, in 10 dimensions, for line for these guys. And that turns out to preserve some supersymmetry. And because you need to, you know, put a whistle line for this guy, you set C0 equals to zero. And the resulting theory with 16 supercharges is what I was calling F theory on Klein bottle times a circle before, simply because these two symmetries uplift to reflections on the F theory circle. And it has been known for 20 years. Okay, this is very simple theory. Any questions about this theory? It's a very simple construction. Okay. What is the twist? Twist is extremely stupid. The Ramora monoxons is zero is periodic and minor monoxon is periodic by period one. <laughs> and so the equation C0 equals minus C0, which tells you the fixed points on the actions, has actually two fixed points. So the C0 goes to zero, or you can put C0 goes to one. Okay. And it turns out that this theory, as I'm gonna tell you later, is a component of more like this kind of dimension. Okay. Now you might be asking, you might be asking, this is this 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 way of constructing this theory, just having this other solution, seems very stupid. It's very, very simple. Why all the fuss? Why did you take so long to develop about it? And why hasn't this been proposed before? Well, I don't know why people didn't propose it before, but I can tell you why I was wary to think about this before. It's because doing the same argument in other setups leads to nonsense. Okay. This is something that myself and not just myself, other people were confused for quite some time. But let's see, the argument that I gave you is very simple. C0 goes to minus C0 has two solutions when C0 is periodic, period one. Very stupid argument, right? It's so stupid that you can actually do it in the construction of type one string theory as an O9 oriented block type to be with 32 D9 brains. You can just do it, it's the same argument. And you can set C0 equals to zero, and that's type one string, or you can set C0 equals to minus one half. And that would be, you know, this was studied in a paper by Sethi, and he proposed that C0 equals to one half was a new string theory, this time really a new string theory in 10 dimensions, which I, you know, I dubbed the Sethi string because he proposed it. In 10 dimensions? This would be, this is 10 What do you do in 10 to get a new theory? Well, it's the level, it's the same, it's the story that I've been telling you. It's the same at the two levels super of the at the, at the at the level of the two direct supergravity. It might be different at the level of uh, of uh, massive states. Well, how do I see that if I am sitting in 10 dimensions? What should I study? Well, there's uh, I mean all I know is that two derivative level is the standard supergravity. But you, you know, you have the spectrum of brains, you have the spectrum of strings, this might be different in this level. Hmm. Right? I mean, it, it may be not, <laughs> but you see. The moment that you change a meaningful parameter, you know, if you're just being agnostic and say, well, I don't know, whatever can happen. And this is 2B, right? Type 2B. Is this an oriented of type 2B, so it becomes type 1. This is the oriented of type 2B that gives you type 1 string theory. You add the O9 and 32 mm -hmm. D9 brains, and rather than setting this equals to zero, you set it to one half. Okay? Is this a new theory or not? So Sethi wrote it down, started studying it, and what he found is that you get extremely weird things if you follow this thing through duality. So for instance, you put it on a circle, you try to dualize it, you end up with a theory which should have rank eight, but this one has rank 16. So it just said it was very puzzled. Like on one hand, it's a very reasonable thing to do. But uh, on the other hand, it leads to inconsistencies. So if you don't know whether the idea works in this simple case, then I also cannot trust it in, 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 the, in the other case that I was interested in. In, in nine dimensions, we get a new string theory. Uh, so what is going on? So the reason why we were able to do this is because we understood finally what happens to the set is string, to this idea of setting C0 goes to one half. And it turns out that the answer is that it's actually really fine, you can do it, but it's actually equivalent to setting C0 goes to zero. Now, how do I see that? Well, it turns out that the answer is kind of familiar. And actually, the argument that we found is, is actually implicit in one paragraph on a paper by Witten from 1998. And once we published the paper, we were contacted by Oren. He told us that he actually gave a talk in Oviedo, which never became a paper about this point. And the idea is that the type one string theory okay, has massless fermions, which are in the joint. And you can, in principle, do a O32 gauge transformation. So it's uh, it's it's uh, like the, the 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 two level action 
uh, including also higher relative terms this is symmetric under both two transformations. But because it turns out that these fermions are anomalous under this transformation. So once you do this transformation, the partition function is not left the same. And the shift of the partition function because of this anomaly is the same as shifting C0 equals to zero to C0 one half. It is the same mechanism that we are familiar from in four dimensional effective field when you have a theta angle with massless quarks. You have a theta angle with massless quarks. You can wash away the value of the theta angle by doing a higher rotation of the quarks. This is a C2 valued version of that. So it happens in 10 dimensions. And so if you give me a theory with C0 equals to one half, I can just switch it to zero. We also check this thing works uh, with duality and with the spectrum of strings and brains of the field. So here's an argument that might have led you to think that the set is string is not the same as type one. If C0 equals to zero, you can ask, what is the BPS string of type one? Well, the BPS string of type one is the D1 brain of type two B or in default, and you know it's tension because it's a BPS object, it's its tension. If you try to compute what the tension of this object is with C0 equals to one half, because the tension depends on the, on the, Ramon, on the value of the ramon Ramon action, the tension of the D1 brain, you get a different answer. So you might say, oh, it's a different string theories. What happens, however, is that this zero brain, the 0, 0,1 brain, is not invariant on the Darien default in this case. Changing C0 changes the actual orientifold action that you're using. And it's the 2,1 brain that is invariant. And if you compute the tension of the 2,1 brain, it happens to be the same as the other thing. So there are always maps like this. The bottom line that I want to convey you is that we check several things and the two theories are the same. And now we understand why they are the same. They are the same because there's this anomaly with the massless fermions. Okay. Now that, now that we understand this thing, this case, this, the data angle in this case, we can understand it in other cases. Any questions so far about the set string? What it was through these problems that set it discovered? I mean, yes. So, for instance, one thing that it, the discover problems if you do, uh, if you follow the ordinary rules. Okay. So, one thing you can do is you can put it on circles, and then the C equals to one half. You can expect to C equals to C one equals to one half. So when it goes to one half, you know, it's the has an M theory. It's uh, the C1 is the Ramon Ramon vector, so it has a description in M theory. And what this is telling you is that this, the internal space that you have is like a vibration over a circle. Uh, and actually, the, the geometry that you get from uplifting these to 11 dimensions is, um, is um, a Mobius strip in M theory. Mobius strip in M theory has one boundary. So that leads to 1E8. So that leads to a rank. Uh, Eight plus one from the vector boson, nine in, in nine dimensions, and this theory So that's one of the parameters here. Uh, it's just that you know this was you know he was extrapolating the duality rules. They don't work like that. But, you know. The theory is the same. Now, the thing I was telling you, which was do exactly the same thing. Try to put C0 equals to one half in 2B compactified on a Wilson line for one of these guys. When you do it for this theory, these fermions, which have this anomaly, blah, 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 they're no longer present. So I can do it. There's no problem. The theories can be different. And, and so, you know, the theories can be different. And we actually check, we actually found that the theories are in fact different. They differ on the spectrum of extended objects, of strings. The spectrum of strings of the two theories is very different. Which strings? Because I said a couple of times already, the story thing is that you have this tensor in the gravity multiplet, there's a two form there. And in every quantum theory of gravity, we believe because of something we call the completeness principle, there are, there are strings which are under this and then this guy. And this is manifestly true in these examples because it's just a fundamental string. Okay. For instance, if I choose. Uh, the uh, S1 on a Wilson line of minus one to FL, which is just a choice of like the frame. This two form in a gravity multiple is just the Nevis Schwarz, Nevis Schwarz field that we know and love, type to be string theory. And the strings that couple to this guy are fundamental strings. Okay. So let's see what is the spectrum of strings in these theories in nine dimensions. And we're going to do this directly from 10 dimensions. 
when c0 equals to zero, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be drawing this. These are theories, okay, uh, where you take them to be on a circle with a Wilson line for minus one to the FL. And I'm representing that by taking the double cover circle. So I'm, for instance, if I, I need to repeat objects, and for any object that I put here, I put its image acted on the minus one to the FL. Okay. So for C0 equals to zero, if I kind of construct a fundamental string, I put a one comma zero string of type to B. And its image, and because it's invariant is equal to its image, I put another string like that. And this is the description in the double cover of a string which is charged under the guy. You say what FL is? Uh, left moving worship fermion number. Oh, okay. okay. It's, uh, it's the two perturbative symmetries of type to B. In the theory language, there are reflections around the X axis or the Y axis of the, of the theory terms. Okay. So you know it's just it's just uh, some discrete symmetry that have to be I don't know. But let's repeat this picture with C0 equals to one half. Well, when you do it with C0 equals to one half, the monodromy is more like minus one to the FLT because you're looking at the fixed point where so so when you solve the equation C0 equals to minus C0 over the reals, if you want to get to zero equals to one to one half, because you're shifting. Uh, with one half, you put the action of the degenerator shifting by one. And so it turns out you can still put this brain, still invariant. But now you can put this other object as well. Okay. There's uh there's uh instead of putting a fundamental suit, you can put a D1 brain, okay, and its image under this action is a one comma one brain. And if you count the charges that these guys have under the B field, when in certain normalization, this gas one plus one is the first component, it uh, has one plus one has charge two. This one has one plus one, two. And this one has zero plus one, one. So <laughs> this guy, for C0 equals to one half, is the string with smallest charge. The configur this configuration represents the strings with smallest charge in theory, and it's not BPS. So the two theories are different. When C0 goes to zero, for every value of the string charge, you have a BPS object. When C0 goes to one half, you only have BPS objects for the guys of even charges. So the theories are clearly different. But again, to be humble, is it two different circle compactification of type 2B? Yes, about. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Let me, let me get clear, because I'm going to be saying the new string theories because that's the language I got in my okay. head. But every single time, I mean, okay. yes. Okay, good. Yes, absolutely, okay. Um, so there's this new string. And, you know, this, this, uh, this, uh, this might be important for, for some of you that follow this, this form of arguments to try and constrain effective theories. This theory is important because it provides a counterexample to a conjecture that has been put out, which have no counterexamples, which is the idea of string BPS string completeness, the idea that you have BPS strings for every value of the chart wherever you could have it. Sorry about that. Okay. And this is the first example of this thing with for charges. And the reason why this is important from a sociological point of view is that there's many constraints that we've put on, let's say, supervised in six dimensions or, 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 in, or in 10 dimensions or stuff that assume that you can have a BPS string with charge one. In this theory, the smallest BPS string has charge two. Okay. But this theory came from a string theory. Surely it must satisfy all. What this is telling you is criteria. that. What this is, no, exactly. What this is telling you, you see, this, this BPS completeness thing, there's swamp plan principles sometimes, some of them you get from very general things that you believe are true in quantum gravity. Like sometimes you're lucky and just for no global symmetry, you can get that the rank is one modulo x. But you also take what you can get. And so for instance, people were making the argument, oh, you see every string theory that we have is extension for charges, okay, has a BPS complete spectrum. Look. If we always have a BPS complete spectrum, we can put this and these constraints, okay? And this is what people were doing. What I'm telling you is that one has to be careful about Why it. Why do they call it string BPS completeness? The word string means that if it's coming from string. No, no, no. It means that we're talking about completeness of the spectrum of strings, okay? I'm talking, I'm saying that the, oh. in the, the there's, there's a two form that has nothing to do with string theory. Oh. That's charged objects. Okay. 
Okay. That's why we call it stream VPS complex. Language is important. Language <laughs> is Sometimes important. Can you language, yes, language okay. is important. Thanks for clarifying. Yes, I just mean that the okay. completeness of VPS pink states, but uh, <laughs> just extended objects can appear in any theory. Uh, yeah. I mean, any theory with two form field can support some. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And the question is, do they always have to be VPS? Well, no. Let's give you an example where they're not. Okay. Uh, Another funny thing that's used in this theory is the duality group. So for C0 equals to zero, the duality is generated by S and T. You know, it acts on, on this theory and gives you S to C. And for C0 equals to one half, it turns out that S is no longer preserving the form of, of an axial atom which has real part one half. So it doesn't preserve the conditions as it equals to one half, but this other guy does. And other generation and so the the actual the actual duality group is the group generated by this and this b which is some congruence group of sl 2 c and that this is interesting because if you start looking at brains in this compactification of of type to b with a data angle you might find you might be able to find examples of field theories living in their world volume which have this thing as duality group instead of to c which is interesting uh so completely identify the modelized space this is the modelized space the uh, in nine dimensions of F theory and Clamboya time circle. And the one that we found, we found all the corners, they all have data and they all have data angle versions, and it changes a little bit. What's the AOB again? AOB is uh, the one we we're just discussing circle with uh, Wilson line for minus one to the FL. But the letters they will be a symmetric orbital of type to B. Ah, this is how they're imagined. Yeah. I'm not too clear. To DP, uh, double car part background. It's the S dual of it. Okay. All the acronyms drive from. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Thank you. But can you imagine if I had to write the original time? You know, the type to be, which is a circle with a Wilson line for omega. It's probably better. Sure. Uh, sorry, but it's true. I went over the acronyms and I went too quick. I apologize for that. Okay. So it looks nice. And you were asking, can we get this from 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 the useful techniques? Why did I get this from the useful techniques? Well. So turns out that one thing you can do, you can compactify this theory in a circle. And if you compactify in a circle, it turns out that it admits an M theory description in a very simple space. Climb bottle, the, the, the theory that we had before was climb bottle times a circle. That's M theory or F theory in a dimension is climb bottle times a circle. It turns out that the climb bottle, you can have a non trivial vibration over a circle. And that's the guy that describes this. Why wasn't it described? Why wasn't it discussed? Well, it's an unorientable space. People usually steer away from those. You need to look at an orientable spaces where you can define covariant constant spinners. But the point is that indeed, this is a very simple thing. Why are we not looking for this? We should be looking for this. And we actually started looking into this. What is the relevant condition? So for it, if you want it supercharges, you look for Calabia or G2 or you know, you look, you look for rich flat manifolds with 16 supercharges. You look for Riemann flat manifolds. This is an example of a Riemann flat manifold. And the most general Riemann flat manifold is what we call the Biberbach manifold. It's a quotient of the torus by some discrete group. And that's the arena where you're looking at. There's a finite number of these for any value of n. Mathematicians have explicit lists until n equals four. And for many equals five onwards, they have like a, you know, like algorithm to find them. And uh, you know you just need to go through that list and find which ones in which ones does it make sense to put in theory. Which not all of them admit spinners, not all of them you know admit covariant constant spinners. You just look for those that do. What does it have to do with Klein bottle time circle? Well, Klein bottle time circle is an example of this. Of this, yeah. Think of it like Klein bottle mm -hmm. is torus mod C two. So Klein bottle time circle is T three mod C two, where the C two just acts on the T two. Just an example of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you alerted us that it may not admit spinners. Yes. And that so how can we have supersymmetry if oh, you have a spinner? Oh, sorry, sorry, but I can. So it, I, I'm saying that if you look at the general list that mathematicians have, many of the entries, in fact, most of them don't admit the spinners. So you don't, you're not interested for them on them. As but some do it. But some do. Okay. Like Line okay. Circle, like this guy, like a bunch of others. It does it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking mm -hmm. about it. And so, for instance, with n equals three, this is the list. And for instance, these guys, they all have mid spinners because every three manifold admits spinners. Uh, but, uh, but these guys do not admit commonly constant spinners. 
these ones are non-orientable and they do, they're just kind of a tensor circle and this non-trivial vibration I was telling you about. And the others are just quotients of T3 mod C2, three sigmoid C6. Okay. So which one of these are good? Um, this answer, the, the answer to this is a bit more complicated. The, these two guys are good for what I've been describing so far. They're good backgrounds for M theory. They're awesome backgrounds. They give you these new components. One of them gives you the old component. The other one gives you the new component I'm really talking about. Okay. Okay. What about these other four guys? Well, these guys are very interesting. They don't admit primarily constant spinners, but because they're quotients of a T3 with an SL2C element, they admit covariantly constant spinners which are twisted by SL2C. So you can not use them to construct SUSI backgrounds in a theory like, uh, like, uh, like M theory. But if you have any theory which has an SL2C symmetry that you can use, you can combine the SL2C symmetry, symmetry here with the symmetry of your theory to construct covariantly constant spinners. Do you know any theory with SL2C asymmetry? I have to be, I have to be string theory. So these guys, you cannot use to construct supersymmetric backgrounds in, in M theory, but you can use it to construct supersymmetric backgrounds in type 2B. Type 2B has 10 dimensions. So when I put it on a three manifold, it's gonna give me examples of 70 n equals one theory. There's just one big paper that classifies 70 n equals one theories. And it's called, that, that I know, it's called triple fractures and strings. And what we find here with these manifolds is a geometric description of some of the theories with low rank that we found there. Okay? Uh, and here's the interesting thing. And whose paper is that? Uh, uh, this is Sapseti, uh, Jan de Boer. Um, Seti et al, shall we say? Seti et al. Okay. Uh, it's from, in, uh, from um, roughly 2001. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes, I can tell you. So, this is a new description of the triple uh, low rank examples of triple fluxes and strings. And it turns out that two of them admit discrete angles of different kind. You can freeze the periods of C2 or B2. Okay. And the new theories that you get like this have a discrete C3 digit angle, a discrete discrete angle. We studied those as well. In both cases, there's an incompleteness of PPS traits. Okay, it's C2 value or C3 value. Okay. So you always get, uh, when you have these discrete angles, you always seem to get different strings. So this is how the landscape of the six dimensions looks now uh, with all the theories that we found like this. Uh, so for instance, these are the new ones that we found. These are the new ones in two dimensions. In, sorry, in seven dimensions. Uh, um, you see, it's, it's, it's a rich landscape. And just to finish, I'd like to mention that, um, so, you know, I, start, I, I basically started talking about the Swan Plan. And the only thing I've actually, new thing that I've done in this talk is to produce new examples of string theory. So I'm enlarging the landscape. And so as an end of this talk, I'd like to put forth a conjecture, which is based on all the examples that I found so far. This one is one of the ones that I'm just extrapolating from examples, okay? So it might be wrong. I don't know. If you find a counterexample, if you have a counterexample, please let me know because I'd like to know. This is a statement that I think that so far is the one, I'm going to present a statement, which is true in every example that I know so far. Okay, so I've been telling you there's several disconnected components of modular space. And until this work that I did with Hector, some of these components just didn't have a geometric description. So for instance, there's this component of modular space in M theory, which you would describe as a K3 with three frozen E6 similarities. For those that you don't know what you do is you take a K3 and you go to a singular point in modular space where you find some spikes in your K3. And you turn on some intervals of some Ramon fields in M theory, and when you compactify M theory on this thing with, with, um, with, um, with, uh, with these fluxes, you get rid of some of the moduli, and you get a supersymmetric theory, uh, which is uh, in this case uh, a seven-dimensional theory, which didn't have a, ge an, a geometric description. Meaning, we didn't know how to get this guy without putting singularities on K3 or something like that. We put in some sort of singularity. Super, like a supergravity person would not have gotten this background because you need a singularity. Now, you didn't know the, what this state was everywhere in modular space. 
and what, what, what the, the new, the, the, this description in terms of the back manifolds that I found, it's actually the description when you send the case here to zero size after some duality. And this is a smooth space. This is a super uh, background that a super guy, the person would have found. Okay. So you see, it seems to be the case that in every example that I know, if you go, sometimes you may have a description with unions, with orbifolds, with singularities. But it is always true in all the examples that I know, if you tune the moduli, if you go to some particular corner of the moduli space, in all the examples that I know, there is one corner where you can construct the theory as a smooth compactification of one of the 5D string theories that we know in 10 dimensions with bundles or whatever, but strings, stuff that a supergravity person would construct. Okay. And K3 on, uh, that's uh, M theory on K3. Okay. It is. Yes. Hey, uh, that could also be described as a dual to uh, heterotic string on T. Uh, uh, no, not very good. Not this one. What the duality that you're proposing happens for theories of high rank. Okay, so when the rank is five or higher, if you, if you take the same limit. Okay, it depends on the pattern of frozen singularities. Okay, there's some. So I got it the wrong way around. Yeah. I think I should have said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. Exactly. So good. Very good, but this is also part of the answer. If I was doing this instead of with three e, e six singularities, which freezes a lot of moduli, I have I, I have was having less moduli. Okay. Uh, then what you will get is heterotic with with a triple. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. what you get. Yeah, that's what I mean. yes. And, but these are the ones. There were some in that paper. There were some theories in which they were not able to give a heterotic description. What we propose is that instead of the type two description. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the in any heterotic thing, it would suffer from the same. Yes, that's right. That's right. Exactly. So, for instance, if you only have those theories, I would, you know, the potential counterexamples to this statement wouldn't be there because we just have them. Uh, and you would say, well, that's heterotic on a T3, and that's completely smooth. My point is that <laughs> there seems to be true that you can only get things, you, you can't, every, 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 every component of modelized space with, that I know actually with any amount of supersymmetry. You can get like this from 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 compactification or a smooth space, and so if this thing is true, so that means that supergravity has a peak at everything. It may not be able to get all the interesting physics that happens in strong coupling, but if you just want to make a list of what are all the possible modelized spaces, maybe you just need to study supersymmetric backgrounds and supergravity. So, what is the evidence for this? Thing? Well, I just told you I spent the last hour talking about the theory of existing supercharges. I'm telling you now, they are all, they, they were, they were examples, but now they happen in more different dimensions. 16 equals zero, how do you get that? Well, it's, that's, that's a theory on a Calabi-Yau threefold, uh, which is typically fiber. Um, you can always uh, go via conifold transitions to a, point, to, to a point where things are smooth. So uh, you can do it for 16 equals zero and for 5 equals one, if all Calabi-Yau's are connected with each other, and this is a statement which is called Reed's fantasy. So it's not true if this is true for phi n equals one, but there was already a conjecture that you can connect everything. Not a conjecture, but fantasy? Uh, is that such a concept <laughs> <laughs> in mathematics? <laughs> I guess, what is the definition of fantasy in mathematics? First time I hear this. But it's called Reed's fantasy, right? I thought it was called Reed's fantasy. Okay, and for 14 equals one, uh, you don't have a generically a modelized space, but the few examples that you do, they are quotients of a Calabio by a C2 discrete symmetry, so they're also like this. And in this case, admittedly, here is where there could be a counterexample because of my lack of, you know, of, you know knowledge of putting counterexamples here, but uh, the one I know about this. And it's interesting, it's like conjecture becomes more interesting with more supercharges. Like, there's this conjecture that all Calabios are connected in one big modelized space. But in AD or 9D and equals one, I just told you an example. There's already three different connected components of model space. For some reason, the more supercharges, the more disconnected components can happen. Okay, so questions that you could have about this. Is it true? Why should it be true? How do you generalize to the ADS? What are the applications or consequences? Like one obvious one is that you could get all components of model space with just trying to correct backgrounds. I just think it's an interesting statement, of which I have no counter examples. And with that, I'll just like to give you with, uh, leave you with a summary on three new string theories, um, which were consistent with the previous swamp -like conjectures that we had about the reverse gravity, but not with this string BPS completely. And 
it's an interesting lookup because we can now start looking at players with seen supercharges systematically going through this beer back manifold. This is something that we're doing. Thanks a lot. Nice, very humble question, yes. really. Uh, terminology uh, is asymmetric orbifold to you geometrical or not? An asymmetric orbifold, uh, well, it just depends on the orbifold, right? There's many. Okay. There's symmetric ones. No, 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 no. no. There's, there's, when you say asymmetric orbifold, you mean actually many orbifolds that you can do in string theory. You just mean orbifold in which the left movers and right movers have different actions. Exactly. Some, yeah. some of those are non geometric. Yeah. Some others, like for instance, the one I told you, it, it, which you describe as type to be on a circle with a Wilson line for, for omega. But I also described a lot of the words as an asymmetric or before. The action on left movers and right movers is different, but it has a geometric description. So is there a way to decide uh, the meaning of geometric versus yes. non-geometric? Yes. Yes. What would that be? That criteria? Geometric to me means that you can, it's, it's a compactification of supergravity. One of the five supergravities that we know in 10 dimensions on a smooth space, with smooth backgrounds. For instance, I allow things like Wilson lines, these ones I was using, Wilson lines, field strength, whatever you like, as long as it's not singular. Literally anything that a supergravity person would do and trust. Yeah, well, people who obtain compactification, sorry, asymmetric orbifold description of target spaces, uh, yes. I mean, uh, the, are they will fall outside your supergravity well, projected. In, in, so, in some examples, right, exactly. So there are some examples of, of asymmetric orbifolds which are very non-geometric, but they typically have moduli. And once you turn the moduli, you discover, oh, this was a canabi yao at the Fermat point. For instance, an example, right? Mm -hmm. Something which I is, don't? Huh? What about if I don't if turn they, on? If you, it, well, but, but the conjecture was about some point in the moduli space. I was not certainly not saying that every point in moduli space have a geometric description that would be mm -hmm. false, mm -hmm. that would be manifestly false. And you're able to characterize your criteria for each corner. Yes, well, yeah, I'm just telling you, well, if you have any moduli, you turn the moduli, and I know, but I'm not able to tell you in which corner you're going to find this. This I don't know. This, I don't know. Okay. Last question has to do with the. Uh, uh, how do I, uh, about supergravity versus uh, string solutions of supergravity? How do I decide what's the spectrum of strings in a given supergravity theory? That's the, well, you can you cannot just from the supergravity theory, right? I mean, but you refer to such concepts, right? Strings in supergravity. Kind of. Yes, yes, but for instance, so, what so decides the, that. So there's something mm -hmm. that we believe, mm -hmm. which is the first of all, you can write down super. You can. You can always write supergravity solutions, for instance, but for a string. Derivatives, uh, supergravity, I know how to find string solutions. Right. Well, they're, they're singular at the core. And the question is, which of these strings are actually corresponding to UV objects in the theory, and which ones do you throw? Yeah, what if I add higher derivatives? I, I, then my string solution is out the window. I don't know whether I can still have a meaningful string solution, can I? Well, the point is that you decide. So supergravity doesn't tell you hmm. which what is the spectrum of, of extended Let's strings. Say. Yes. We believe this general thing, which is called the completeness principle, meaning there should be at least one string solution for each value of the charge. Okay. We believe this. Well, again, two derivative supergravity solution we have in mind always. Uh, I mean, I mean an object which at low, I mean, there is a fundamental object in the theory which at low energies, at long wavelengths, is described by the far field region of a super of a solution of that supergravity. But the so core is going to be singular. Two derivative supergravity equations I'm solving. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. So you have the string here. This is the, the so fundamental core, which you don't describe as supergravity, but there's some region. And in this region, absolutely, you're describing the supergravity, of course. This region is the solution. But the question is, you know, if you start with this region and you extrapolate, you find a singularity. Is the singularity allowed or not? You do this you don't know. This you need another principle to tell you. So, for instance, what I'm telling you is that sometimes you can do this. You can, as far as we know, you can always do this for any value of the charge, but you cannot always do it while keeping BPS. That was the feature of this new stream that I showed you. How. There are no BPS. Okay. Thank you. No more questions? Yes, thank you. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Sorry. Yes, yes. Okay. okay.